Hello and welcome to Complete Games with me James. Hope you guys are doing well and this is my beginner's guide to Subnautica. In this guide I'm going to talk about how to make some of the basic survival tools including the scanner, the repair tool and we're going to eventually finish off and show you how to craft the sea glide in order to get about the place a little bit easier. Now I'm going to start off by saying that Subnautica is a fully immersive game and I emphasize the word immersion because you meant to believe you've crash landed on this planet. Now upon starting this game you're going to get greeted with your difficulty level menu here. I definitely recommend going for survival. This means you're going to have to worry about water, food, and oxygen and it gives you the truly immersive experience of trying to survive on this planet. Hardcore would mean permadeath so survival is the best mode to start with. Upon crashing you're going to be in your life pod you'll notice you've got a medical fabricator and if you take your first aid kit out of the fabricator you will see it will begin crafting another one so it's best to do so and just have a couple on standby. You'll see you've got a storage chest that has a couple of flares a couple of waters and a couple of nutrient blocks. If you press your tab menu you'll see you're greeted with a list of other items, things you can craft, your life pods location and other things that you're going to need later on. And just to the side here you've got your fabricator. This is like your smithy, your cooker and everything you need to craft in the game. So let's go and have a little look about where you have crashed. If you look down to the bottom left, you'll see there's a heart, a food and a water bar and the oxygen bar. You need to keep an eye on all of those things. And you'll see that there's a little limestone outcrop. I've just smashed it and got a little piece of copper, which is quite good. So if I come over here and grab two of these mushrooms with that one piece of copper and two of the mushrooms, I can now craft a battery, but first things first, you need to worry about food. So let's just try and catch some fish. I've got a bladder fish. Just put them away by pressing number two because it's ended up on my second slot on my second bar. And as you'll notice, the O2 is giving us a warning. It does go down in increments of three, so that wasn't actually nine seconds. Without an O2 tank, you only get about 13 seconds underwater to begin with. So we've caught a couple of bladder fish now and perhaps we'll catch a different type of fish. Peeper or this here, a hover fish. So now we've got ourselves some food and water. We'll come back to our life pod and we'll show you how the fabricator works. This is basically the station where you're going to be crafting everything and cooking everything in the game for the most part. So let's just come across to the fabricator and here we'll just see under sustenance we've got a couple of choices. We can make water from the bladder fish that we've caught. Now that's the only fish that can make water. You could also cook the bladder fish but we'll just cook the hover fish and we'll cook the bladder fish. And if we go into our tab menu, go into our inventory, we'll see that the cooked hoverfish gives us plus 23 food and 3 water. A cooked bladderfish only gives us 16 food, so they're best to make into water. But that's how we get going with our water. You can see our medical fabricators crafting another first aid kit. And with that copper and the two acid mushrooms, we can make a battery. However, a battery by itself is not entirely useful. We're going to need to make some tools. If we go into the tools menu, we'll see at the top here, our first option is a scanner. And we need a piece of titanium in order to craft that. And next would be the repair tool. So we need to go out and do a little more gathering. We're going to need to find, it said, sulphur in order to craft the repair tool. Let's grab some more bits. Watch out for these sharks, they are a little bit grumpy. However, they do collect metal. So, sometimes it's good to follow them about. You might find that there's a pile of metal and scrap that's dropped from the crashed ship. 
just like this one here that's conveniently gathered with some metal. So let's just go and grab that. They won't be too happy about it, but they're relatively harmless if you stay out of their way. Again, we're rolling low on O2. We're going to use this brain coral in order to just get a little bit of oxygen. This is a good early way of staying underwater and deeper a little bit more. And as you'll see, the brain coral does replace our O2 a little bit at a time. So they're quite handy to keep you underwater in the early game before you have O2 tanks. Now it is a random crash location where you're going to be starting off. You'll start somewhere in a coral reef and you will not be far from these creep vine clusters. So we're just going to come out and we're going to grab a couple of these creep vine seeds. We're going to need them in order to craft a couple of other bits. Let's just go and grab some O2. And as you can see, only being underwater for 13 seconds or having 45 O2 is not very good. So we need to craft up a little bit more stuff in order to stay underwater longer. So let's check out the fabricator and see what else we can craft now. If we come up to resources, we can make all of that metal into titanium, all of that scrap. And we get four pieces of metal for each piece of scrap back there. Let's come back into electronics, or into our tools rather. And with one piece of titanium and a battery, we can now craft our scanner, perhaps the most useful tool in the game. In order to make the repair tool though, we're going to need some cave sulfur and some silicon rubber. And to make the knife, we also need some silicon rubber. Well, we just grab the creep vine seeds. So let's craft a little bit of rubber. Come back here and we can craft our survival knife as well. Okay, so now we've got the scanner, we're going to go and have a look around for some cave sulphur and show you where that particular resource is kept. We're going to use this little storage container to drop off some of this titanium and these other bits so we've got some more room to go and gather some more bits and pieces that we're going to need to survive. Okay, so this is the scanner tool. It is worth noting that you do swim a little bit slower when you've got an item out. Both hands are free. You will swim a little bit faster. Okay, there's one. Now this is a crash fish. You see these they will immediately come towards you. But inside their little eggs, they drop cave sulfur. And they're just found inside these little caves strewn across the coral reef. They'll be reasonably close to where you crash land as well. These guys drop little gas pellets and when they go off, they will give you damage but they're relatively harmless, that's just their defense. Okay. Let's just go out and hunt for some more resources. So we're just down hunting for some more copper from these shale outcrops. Now if you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner, a little icon goes off for the scanner when we can scan something. Now that icon still goes off whether you've got the scanner out or not. So it's worth just keeping your eye out for that little icon. Okay, so we've got the cave sulfur. Let's just grab these bits out of our storage chest. We've gathered a little bit more metal as well. So first of all, we go into resources. Let's make all of this scrap metal into titanium. And now we want to craft one of our tools, the repair tool. 
which takes a little bit of silicon rubber, sulfur and titanium. Now, the only other reason we need cave sulfur is to make flares, so that may be the only time you need to go and gather cave sulfur if you don't use the flares. We have now found the blueprints for the Sea Glide, and that requires a battery, lubricant and copper wire. And equipment wise, let's make ourselves a standard O2 tank. That just takes three titanium. We've now got 75 O2, so around 20 odd seconds underwater now. We can upgrade further. We could also make some fins and that'll help us swim under the water a little bit faster. That takes two bits of rubber. And now we've equipped the fins. Just make ourselves a little bit more food. Have to use a bladder fish. So the next task will be to repair our life pod. So first things first, let's just re restore the life systems. Put this fire out, get some light in here. Much better. And we can now repair the radio. So we just come over and do that. Now upon pressing the button for our first message and sending out a distress call, we will get distress calls back to us. This will in turn lead us to different points on the map and different survivor points. As you can see, we've now got another medical kit so we can grab that and let that one fabricate another first aid kit. And if we come outside, Perhaps we can start gathering the bits we need for the sea glide. So we're going to need copper. It needs a battery, so we need two mushrooms and we're going to need a piece of copper. But we're also going to need two pieces of copper to make the copper wire. So I'm going to go and gather that. Okay. Now we have everything we need, we can make the copper wire with two bits of copper ore and we can also make a battery with the mushrooms and the copper. And from the creep vine clusters we can make a lubricant. And if we come down to it'll be deployables and sea glide, we can craft the sea glide. And this is going to allow us to get around the map a lot quicker. The sea glide will increase your okay. exploration range. Wonderful. For your safety, please pack supplies for long journeys and stay within five kilometers of the nearest life pod or habitat. Fantastic. So if we just come down here, we'll see that we do have a message to play. And this is going to give us our first location to come and check out or a location to a possible another survivor from the Aurora. As you can see it's marked it on the map and you now have the sea glide to get out and investigate all of these radio messages and locations. Remember this is a completely immersive in game and you've got to just follow the clues. I don't want to spoil anything more for you but if you get stuck further I have done a complete playthrough and I did try to do that without spoilers so go and check that out and there is also some other more advanced guides on Subnautica but until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you.